it became fairly nasty fairly quick. It was like within two or three days he started attacking people. So I'm not sure how sincere that apology is. But let's turn to our uh, panel right now. Uh, politics editor for Business Insider, Josh Barrow, Republican strategist and vice president of the Winston Group, Kristen Soltis Anderson, and CNN commentator and Washington correspondent for The New Yorker magazine, uh, Ryan Lizza. Ryan, I, I, you know, the, the, I was talking with Josh Rogan about this earlier. Um, how do you get so high in the national security establishment and do something so dumb, and not a momentary lapse of judgment like an affair or a DUI, but two years, two years yeah, really of just letting the bile out. Really self-destructive. I feel like you're nobody in this town if you weren't attacked by Nat, Nat Sec Wonk. I mean, I, I, I wasn't really attacked. Well, but you, you were mentioned. Yeah. Come on, come Bo on. Bo Biden was attacked <laughs> through me. <laughs> you know, I, 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 there's nothing. To, you, there's no way to defend what he said. I mean, he was mean-spirited and um, and just. It was almost like the id of someone, you know, just a complete stream of conscience of, of the, the nastiest things you could think of as you're going through your day about people around you who are rivals or, or, or obstacles in your professional career. And I wouldn't defend what he wrote for a second, but I, I, I can't help but, but ask the question of, you know, do you, does, does someone who works in the government have a right to just sort of vent on Twitter? I mean, is there any sort of right that you have just to, just to, just to be out there and, and say what you want anonymously? No. Or <laughs> well, I mean, That's like, the end of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there are all I mean, sorts of jobs where it's important that you not say things in public that undermine your employer. Um, I mean, that's, you know, even as a, as a journalist. But I if it's have, anonymous, you know, yeah. if, you, if you don't know that it's someone at the White House, what's the harm? Well, for one thing, it isn't necessarily anonymous forever. These things can uh, can can be. Yeah, now we're, we would not have been well, doing a story about this if it was just somebody at the Brooks, Brookings Institute. The fact yeah. that it's, it's newsworthy because it came out and because he was a national security staffer. That's what's newsy about this. Right. And I and I wonder about you know the uh, um, you, you mentioned he's losing his clearance about this. You know, the, if you're for two years tweeting from inside and you know making complaints about other people within the administration I, I, I wonder we're gonna have to look back through the through the whole archive of it, of it but was there really nothing that he that he said that didn't actually undermine policy objectives of the administration rather than just being you know unpleasant no and, no and he, he definitely criticized yeah. policy he talked about the Obama's Syria policy being incoherent uh, what do you make of this mess? Uh, so I'm all about people who, uh, you know, are dissenting views, making their voices known. But I also think that if that means your employer wants to fire you, then your employer has a yeah, right to fire yeah, you. Right. Um, and so it, in this case, I mean, this wasn't like he wasn't a whistleblower where he had this really principled <laughs> stand against right. something and was just trying to get the word out there. I mean, there were nasty comments about how he seems to think that like every woman in Washington needs to drop about 10 pounds. I mean, this was just yeah. it was just gross, and it didn't really further, I don't think, any kind of cause. That, that he may have had. And one of the, one of the sad uh, apparent victims in all this, in addition to all the people who he maligned, uh, his wife, a uh, top staffer for Senator Bob Corker, whom he accused of having amateur hours. So this is going to adversely, fairly or not, and I suspect not, uh, impact her. Yeah. Now look, in, embedded in the feed were these sort of juicy nuggets about what was going on in the national security world within the Obama administration, right? It was like having a good source inside the administration with this sort of real-time feed, except, you know, the majority of it was also these crazy comments. But did he not also comments. have contacts who were journalists that if he really felt like it was important to get this information yeah. out there that he could leak it? No, to my understanding is he actually was a source to several journalists, but and who were all surprised that it was him. But let me turn to the to the other big subject of the day, which is uh, Kathleen Sebelius and this uh, meeting that the Obama administration is having with insurance company executives. Uh, do you? Uh, I, we were talking earlier. Um, a Republican official was outraged that these uh, these meetings were private and secret, and comparing them to the meetings that Dick Cheney he had uh, with energy industry officials. Uh, do you agree with that or, or, or what, what, what do you... There have always been concerns that it, to what extent is this law a handout to insurance companies? To what extent does it make it easier for insurance companies uh, to make a lot of money by, you know, mandating that their product be purchased by people? So that's always been a criticism of the law. And I think the lack of transparency around the Affordable Care Act has been a big problem now as it's rolled out. You have a lot of folks who are experts in the tech community who have said if there was more transparency earlier on about the technical glitches that we're now seeing, that outside folks could have come in and helped make this better, that if, that if there had been more transparency around this law from the get-go, we could have avoided a lot of these. And Josh, I, I want to give you the last word because you've written about this, about the idea that 
It's the excuses that is the problem for the Obama administration right now. Right. I think, you know, if the administration came out forthrightly and said, you know, this is the list of technological problems that we believe exist with the website, this is the strategy we're taking to fix them, I think they'd have more credibility because right now, it, it frankly, it, it doesn't even look clear that the White House has a grasp on everything that's wrong with the website. We know traffic is crashing it. We know that there are certain problems in the back end. But one thing people are worrying about is that there are problems in the back end, like these issues where uh, data is going to insurance companies garbled. They're having to get on the phone with the government to figure out what the applications are supposed to say. It's only working because almost nobody can file an application. So we don't know how serious those problems are. If the White House would level with us, I think people would be more confident that they're on this problem and fixing it. But I think, you know, for better or for worse, the law involves close cooperation between the government and insurance companies. They need to be meeting with the White House. I, I wouldn't ding them for that. All right. Great. If they weren't meeting with them, right? Right. <laughs> Thank you.